Uh, I'm here today with John O'Bacon to follow up on some of the questions you guys had in the comments of my previous video about the Ubuntu Phone OS. John, thank you for being here with me. Thank yeah. you. For, I'm delighted. Big fan, so I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, the first question the viewers all had was, where is the terminal in Ubuntu Phone OS? Yeah, I've heard a few people ask that as well. It's um, Obviously, the terminal is not something that most consumers typically are going to use. Right. Um, um, and what's interesting is that the relationship between so how we're going to be releasing Ubuntu Phone is a little different to how we, we typically have, have worked on the desktop. So with the desktop, we provide this general purpose image that you can download and you can install in your laptop. And then we work with the big hardware manufacturers like uh, Lenovo and HP and Dell and people like that to pre-install it on, 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 on devices. Most consumers don't tend to install operating systems on their phones. So the primary route in which we're taking uh, with Ubuntu Phone is, is this business relationship with these operators and handset manufacturers. So we're, we're in meetings with all of these different manufacturers at CES um, to kind of move that along. However, um, you know, first of all, people are going to be able to download images for the Galaxy Nexus at some point, we'll be, so people can play around with it. Um, and obviously some people are going to want to use something like a, like a terminal. The difference is, is that these handset manufacturers will be building these, the implementation of Ubuntu phone, most likely for a consumer market, and they may think to themselves, well, they don't need a terminal, right? So we'll, we'll be providing the ability to have a terminal, but if, they, if, if, if a manufacturer says, well, we don't want to ship it, then that's a different measure. There will, however, be, I'm sure, multiple terminals available in the, in the app store. So you'll be able to download and install it in the same way you can, can do with Android. Okay. Well, let's see. Next question people had. Uh, closing applications. I've seen a lot of switching between, but I haven't actually seen anything be closed. It's a good question. I mean, so right now we've got a way of closing them on, the, on this reference architecture. Right. I'm not actually sure how you close them normally. I think what you'll probably do is you'll probably hold down you probably hold down on the application in the launcher, and then you'll and there'll be a close, quick list item will pop up. Or right perhaps now, something in the uh, the swipe up Chrome. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, there may be something. Yeah, in the swipe up for the application options. Okay. But to be honest with you, I'm not sure okay. what that is. Right now. Yeah, that works for me so far. Uh, respins. Uh, people have been asking about things like Linux Mint and uh, just other Ubuntu-based distributions. Is that going to be something? Uh, I know right now there's like remaster sys for Ubuntu. Will there be something like that for Ubuntu Phone? So I think we'll take the same approach that we take with Ubuntu, which is we, you know, we release the code, it's open source, it's free software, right. and one of the most beautiful freedoms that we have with free software is that people can take respins and they can, right. they can do all kinds of stuff with it. Okay, so you it's know, a possibility, but it's not going to be, you know, actively pursued on, on Ubuntu's side, but if people want to do it, do it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, 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 unlike, it's not going to be something that we're going to be focusing on. I mean, we're not going to be trying to reach out to Mint and whoever else and say, hey, we should do a respin, right. but we'll put the code out there. We're certainly not going to stomp on people. Exactly. Um, at least I don't think so. I'm, I'd be very <laughs> surprised if we tried to install someone because that's not what we do. Um, but you know, one of the things we've always tried to do in Ubuntu is to create this, this kind of I hate the term rich ecosystem because it's such salesperson speak. But you know, one of the reasons why we spent so much money on Launchpad and investing in Launchpad was to build a service that people can build operating systems on, and that will extend to the phone as well. So I absolutely foresee a future where someone's going to take Ubuntu on the uh, the Ubuntu phone. OS and they're gonna they're gonna rebuild it and they'll probably make a mint version or whatever else. That's awesome. So. Yeah. All right. I look forward to that. Uh, one last question. Um, you've mentioned Ubuntu for Android is still in the works and Ubuntu Phone, which will uh, show the Ubuntu Desktop OS when you plug it in as well. Uh, is this going to be? Is there going to be a way to dual boot it with Android? So not just have Ubuntu on Android, but actually have both operating systems and swap between them. Would that be something the community would kind of take care of? I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, currently, there, there are some ways where you can, it's, it's an odd question, but uh, there are some ways where you can load up Ubuntu and then dual boot it into Android. So you, you'd reboot the device and select Android, have a completely different uh, ecosystem there. Maybe have your, your work on Ubuntu and your, your home life on Android or something like right. that. Yeah, so I mean, right now what we offer is, essentially what you can see, there's, there's really three ways of doing this. Mm -hmm. So you can either have Ubuntu on your phone, like this, and um, and it's just a replacement for Android. Okay. Um, and it just runs a phone OS. Um, so that's one option, and that's good for smartphones. So any phone that will run Android today will pretty much do that. Okay. Um, and of course, it'll do it better because it's a Ubuntu phone. Ding! Okay. Um, the second option is that you have Android running on the phone, and then when you dock it, it then boots a full Ubuntu desktop. And that's what we've traditionally referred to as Ubuntu for Android. Right. Okay. Um, and that's on what we call super phones. They're quad core phones, essentially. Uh, still, like a lot of people are walking around with these phones in their pockets. 
Um, and then really the third option, which is what I'd like to see, is where you have Ubuntu phone running on the phone, and then you dock it, and then it boots an Ubuntu desktop. Okay. And um, it's interesting because the, the whole idea of docking a phone and booting a desktop is, is so revolutionary and new. Agreed. That yeah. it, one thing that we've seen at CS is a lot of, we've seen some operators and handset manufacturers have come over and said, it's kind of the brain's tweaked onto a different level. Right. They're thinking, okay, well, yeah, I guess we could do that. It's an interesting market. You know, maybe the enterprise market's interesting where that can happen. So we, we've actually got the technology for what we're likely to see in products in 2014, 2015. Right. So we've got, we've, we're, we're here at the right time. Um, so hopefully we should be able to nail all of those circumstances that you're looking at. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, all the questions I had for you today. Uh, thank you so much for being with me again. Thanks. Definitely appreciate thanks. the yeah, demonstration and everything. And uh, that's all for me for today. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.